For nearly a year now, I've been getting into 3D printing. It's a lot of fun to make little toys and widgets. It's a great extension of getting used to CAD and 3D modeling. I've been able to make a lot of machine parts and actual useful stuff for my home and the workshop. I'll even admit that I've, yeah, I've made some spinners too. All that stuff you saw was made on this printer, my first printer, an Anet A8. Uh, it's the basically the cheapest one you can get. It's an eBay special you buy and build from pre-cut acrylic sheets. Recently, a Chinese distributor, Gearbest, contacted me about Anet's new offering, the E10. Now, this is bigger than the A8. It has a bigger build area, and it has aluminum extrusions instead of the acrylic. It's got a self-contained controller box and a few other various upgrades and improvements from the A8. In fact, you can read the specs right here. For clarity's sake, Gearbest came to me about sending me this machine in exchange for a review of it. So I'm not being paid to promote this product, nor did I pay money in exchange for this product. I'm simply sharing my first impressions of this new machine with you all. As far as the unboxing goes, it came, I mean, securely packed. Everything was, was reasonable. And the first things out of the box were a sheet of the bed material made by 3M, I'm not sure what that is, and then a couple of rolls of PLA filament, and a printed manual. This is something the A8 did not have. The rest of the box contained the two pieces of the frame, the controller box with the wiring harness to attach to everything, a spool holder for the filament that fits on top of the controller box, uh, some tools like a screwdriver and a little pallet putty knife, a USB cable, a USB SD card adapter with a micro SD card, and some spare parts like T-nuts and a spare extruder. Assembly is very straightforward. The two frames are bolted together. The T-nuts fit in the slots of the aluminum extrusions and are just tightened down. And then there are some end cap screws that hold it in place. And it seems pretty rigid all bolted together to be fair. The spool holder for the filament just bolts to the top of the controller unit. And the actual axle for the spool itself is a 3D printed part with two 3D printed nuts. Kind of interesting, and it seems to work so far. The belts are adjustable, like with this wing nut here on the Y-axis. And you can also see the mount that's 3D printed for the linear rail. The extruder nozzle seems to be basically the same as the one on the A8. The heating element needs to be screwed into it and secured with a set screw. If this isn't done, it could get pulled out. And there's also a little thermocouple, the, basically the thermometer that tells the computer how hot it is, and it needs to fit into a little recess inside the nozzle as well. More on that in a little bit. The wires for the heating element and its thermocouple, as well as the fans that all fit on the hot end, need to fit through a little tiny gap on this box that holds the fans before you can bolt all of it to the hot end. It's a little finicky to get it all lined up, and it really feels like there's tension on those wires once everything's in place. I wasn't entirely comfortable with that. The stepper motor that feeds the extruder is actually on the x-axis on the frame instead of being at the hot end like it is on the A8. It feeds the filament through this plastic tube which connects to both sides with a push-to-connect fitting. Plugging in the rest of the wiring harness is pretty easy. Every plug is labeled to where it needs to go. The stepper motors, the hot bed, and the limit switches. One of the advertised features of this machine is a bed material. It's made by 3M. It's an adhesive, plasticky feeling material. It's very smooth, and the prints do stick very well to it. The sheet that comes with it, though, is a little bit too big. I had to cut it down with my wife's paper cutter. From there, it's just stuck on, and any bubbles you can work out with a little credit card or something. The controller unit is pretty loud. The fans in it remind me of, like, a gaming PC. The menus and the little controller wheel are pretty easy to navigate, although the controller wheel has, like, what feels like a backlash to it. It doesn't always register. And trying to warm up the nozzle is where I ran into the first problem, uh, this little guy. In fact, the wire for that thermocouple is a little too short, and it barely reaches into its orifice to register the temperature of the nozzle. Now, I had to fiddle with this thing with tweezers and mirrors and pliers just to get it to fit in there so it would read an accurate enough temperature just to get the nozzle to preheat. It was not easy or fun. Once I finally got a preheat, trying to run some test code, I ran into the next issue. 
Ain't no filament coming out! The nozzle that came installed on the machine was completely blocked. I fiddled with it for another hour before discovering that it just was completely clogged, and then I had to change it out. Luckily, it came with a replacement nozzle. I have no idea why it came to me blocked. So two and a half hours in, and we're ready to finally start printing. And I started with Benchy, which is this little cartoony boat a lot of people use as the benchmark for a 3D printer. This whole print process was delightfully unremarkable. It printed just as you would expect it to. I printed this using recommended settings, using PLA from my local computer store. It's Inland brand. Uh, the color is completely coincidental. There's some little hairs, uh, I don't know what you call those, but you can see there in the windows and around some of the edges where I'm pretty sure the nozzle was too hot and I just drug a little extra filament with it. Otherwise, the finish actually came out really nicely. This is 0.1 millimeter layer height, and everything came out decently smooth and tight. There's no other errors. The bottom is a little junky, I need to work on my nozzle height, but otherwise I'd call that a pretty successful print. Now because this printer is a lot bigger than my other one, I really wanted to try a model that would really kind of fill it up, so I found this Bulbasaur off Thingiverse. It's a low-poly Bulbasaur vase. And this did not go well. In fact, this led to a string of prints not going well. Watch the Z-axis. It's going up. And now it's going down. That's bad. That's really bad. So that print was obviously a fail, and this is <laughs> something that happened quite a bit. I tested this other print. This is just a little design, a little horn I made in Fusion 360. And it gets higher, but you can see the same thing happens. Which I guess makes this as good a time as any to mention another uh, feature of this machine, which is the little reset button on the front of the controller box. This is far more fast and effective than trying to stop the print in the menus, although its location is a little problematic when using the wheel. I broke the part. That's my fault, not the machines. I should mention that before each print, I've made sure that the bed was level and that the nozzle height was set with feeler gauges. Now this print is showing some layer lines, kind of like uh, a ABS when the ambient temperature changes during the print. So that's something to note. The issues with the Z-axis were discouraging, but I wanted to keep trying other prints. So I 3D printed a CAD file I'm working on. This is for a future... CNC-based project. It was nice that the print finished without any issues at all. It came out measuring pretty accurately. Uh, it looked fine. There's some swollen parts there on the right. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I'd consider it satisfactory. Trying to print out other components of this little project got really frustrating. These particular parts, these shapes, I could not get a successful print out of after numerous attempts. I tried multiple files out of Cura, I tried multiple settings, uh, constant readjustments to make sure everything was as accurate and perfect as I could make it on my side. The printer just did not like printing this shape. I don't understand why. I tried at least half a dozen times. Still haven't gotten a successful print. I do not know why. The really baffling thing about it is that I could make successful prints in between these fails with other models, other print files. And then I'd try a new print file of these models again, and the same thing would happen. I don't understand. It really feels like it just didn't like this particular shape. Now, despite that, one of the goals I had for this video was to show you how you could use a 3D printer and Fusion 360 to design practical, usable stuff for your workshop, like, say, a set of soft jaws for a bench vise. I took critical dimensions of the original part, the original jaw, which are basically just the length, width, and depth, as well as the whole size and the whole placement relative to the sides. A straightforward part such as this is a great exercise in Fusion 360, and it helps you become more comfortable in CAD modeling in general. With the basic dimensions of the model in place, you can start adding embellishments, like this little relief cut for holding round parts. Probably not necessary. This is all just having fun with design and just coming up with different ideas. Just for fun, I'm using a triangular-shaped drawing tool to create a set of grooves across the face of it. I've just patterned these up, and I can select each one, and we can just drag them across the front as a cut pattern.
What's cool about Fusion 360 is that it will send your model straight to the slicing program, in this case Cura, which is practically speaking your CAM operation, and it gets all the toolpaths for the machine to print the part. Now you can see here how the covering that we put over the bed is starting to get torn up. Everything's still sticking decently, but this is after about a dozen prints, so that's going to need to be changed probably sooner rather than later. Now something I've noticed with every print is that the nozzle has a really hard time staying hot and it's really slow to heat up. I'm not sure what entirely is causing that. It's probably related to the thermocouple, but it also just doesn't seem to have a whole lot of oomph. Now what's pretty ridiculous is that this was a successful print and I didn't change any of the adjustments or settings on the machine or in Cura after all those failed attempts with the others. But these jaws fit the vise really nicely. Uh, it's worthy of note that if you are after accuracy, PLA is better than ABS. ABS warps and shrinks uh, to a greater degree. Even though this print came across the finish line, it didn't come out entirely perfect. You can see some striations between the layers there, even small gaps, which I presume will turn into weak spots if I were to put any use on these soft jaws. Just a simple test with a round aluminum part, though, it held it reasonably enough for it to be cut on with a file. The hammer test proved to move the part around a little bit, which isn't surprising, and I imagine if I had really cranked these vice jaws down, you'd hear a lot of sickening crunching. But that's just kind of the nature of the design and how I printed the part with its infill. So, for its price point of just around 300 American dollars, this machine has a lot of features to offer, like a bigger work area and the fully aluminum extruded frame. It seems to copy a lot of its design elements from, well, other machines. And to be honest, I've had a lot of issues with it. I haven't had that many successful prints. It took a lot of fiddling just to get it to work right out of the box. And it's still unpredictable, like that Z-axis will just dip down randomly, which I think is has to do with the firmware in the controller box. At least I hope that's the case. And between that and the issue with the thermocouple not fitting in the nozzle the best way, I do not leave this printer unattended when I'm running it. So those are my initial impressions of this machine. You know, it's got a lot of features. I was getting my hopes up for having a theoretically better machine at my disposal, but this one has problems that I think could be solved. But at this point, I've had maybe one in five prints be successful, and those successful prints come out at widely varying degrees of quality. For the price, I know there's other machines in that range that people really enjoy and rave about, so... Do your homework. If the problems with this machine are ever solved, I will happily update you, because it could be a great machine, but it's problematic. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button.